Hello and uh, welcome back guys. Um, if you don't know what time it is, that means that you haven't subscribed or you haven't looked at the uh, the name of, or the title of this channel, which is Dad Time. So welcome back to it. Um, uh, to those who have previously watched my uh, welding update video, um, I apologize. I was about three sheets of the wind and that that's not very um, professional. And it's also kind of, a little bit wonky as far as trying to actually figure it out and explain to you guys the process and why um, I'm doing what I'm doing. So, um, in the previous video, we looked at my very first oxyacetylene weld without filler. Um, you can see a couple of, you know, mishaps in there, but again, it was too much fun not to share. Um, so subsequently, uh, we have our second attempt um, which is a lot more uniform and a lot cleaner and a lot better. And uh, again, I was still having a lot of issue like actually terminating the weld. In other words, I tacked it on both ends here and here. And then uh, when it came to actual time to finish the weld, I had quite a bit of issue. Um, and that's extremely apparent specifically on this one, which is my first right here and right here. The tack it kind of blew through more or less. but. I wanted to show you guys. So uh, in, in the last one, I pretty much just showed you the backside and now I'm gonna show you the progress and what we ended up doing. Um, you have to forgive me, I'm trying to find the right lighting here. Uh, this right here was my very first attempt at uh, oxyacetylene welding with a filler. Um, and I'm, I, you know what I mean? It, I went too fast. I didn't uh, let the, the pool build up. I didn't, there was a bunch of different things that I did not do correctly. And then um, my second pass, so I went this way on the first one, this way on the second one, and my second one ended up being a little bit better. But again, I was still trying to figure out, like, um, I'm left-handed, so I'm, I'm holding the torch here and I'm making my circles either clockwise, counterclockwise, either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I was having a hard time just figuring out that rhythm because it, ended up not working out very well for me. Um, that's number one. Number two, uh, in that class also, we tried brazing. And as you can see, this is the ugliest braze ever. And it is also very heavily focused on the bottom plate as opposed to the upright. Um, I, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I know what the difference is um, in at like how to braze or how not to braze. Um, but uh, in this one, I was having a hard time dealing with the flux. The flux kept melting and just pooling up and then sucking up underneath the braze itself. Um, and so we ended up with a very, very ugly braze. Um, uh, down here towards the end, I actually kind of halfway figured it out, which is why we're going to class, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, my second one. Uh, we'll start with the braze and then we'll move on. Uh, the braze here ended up being significantly more uniform, uh, a lot cleaner, um, simply because I actually took the time and paid attention and slowed down just a little bit just to kind of figure out like, all right, what am I actually doing? So honestly, it went from this direction. It started here and went over here. Um, and it's significantly more uniform and actually uh, bridges between the upright as well as the flat piece. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and show you my uh, my attempts or my third attempt at uh, oxyacetylene with a filler, a uh, little bit more uniform. Um, actually starting to figure out, like I said, that rhythm between like uh, using the torch here, uh, the angles and everything else, and then actually dipping the rod in accordingly while I'm, man, it's, it's like patting your head and running, rubbing your stomach at the same time. Um, and so I had to figure that out. Uh, this would be um, more or less like what I ended up with. And am I super proud of it? No, but I only have but so many hours uh, while I'm at welding class to actually figure that out. Uh, the project was to um, do like three joints, like three coupons in a row, uh, weld the seam and then uh, weld a box and see if it held water and then braze the box to the weld. Um, it, initially it went really well and I had just a little bit of a drip on the bottom side. 
Um, and then I tried to fix it. I tried to reheat it. I tried to add filler metal, everything else. And it was just a, a nightmare. So um, I, effectively I failed that project and it did not go well. Um, but my instructor said, hey, you know what? Like, honestly, like what you did was good enough to pass. You're good, you, you're all right. But me being a perfectionist, me one, like, it may be my ego um, that got involved that I was really disappointed in myself that I did not perfect it. Um, so it's certainly something that I'm going to touch back on uh, just because, it, you know, being a well-rounded, quote unquote, welder um, is a good idea. Um, but uh, our subsequent class was uh, TIG welding. And I'm gonna show you my very, very, very first TIG welding experience. And it was awful. Um, which was this line right here, super, super thin. Um, I, it, it, I was moving too fast. I, I was trying to learn. I was trying to figure it out, like the technique again, because we're moving the cup and we're also adding filler metal and like there's a rocking motion or there's a walking the cup or, you know, anything, any, anyhow, I'm just trying to bring you along uh, with my progression. Um, so this is the very first coupon that I had for TIG welding um, and trying to figure out the pedal, excuse me, trying to figure out the pedal and how to actually make it work and what I'm supposed to be doing, experimenting with different techniques um, uh, that honestly I found on YouTube. Um, and then when my instructor came in, uh, you know, he helped me uh, create this cancerous piece of shit. You have to forgive me for saying that, but it, it is just nonsense. There, there were quite a few good beads in here. Um, and then I covered them up with a bunch of shitty beads. So I, again, learning my very first coupon as far as tape welding goes. Um, which one is it? Oh yeah. Okay. So on this coupon, you can see that uh, my wells became a little bit more consistent. Um, sorry guys, I'm, I'm really trying to find this lighting. You can see that uh, my welds became uh, significantly more consistent. Um, again, the starting stopping and like moving my hand and trying to figure out like the actual rhythm of it um, took me a little bit, but uh, I got some really good welds in here. I'm, when I say really good, I mean compared to what I started with. Uh, you can see that I tried out here on the edge and ended up blowing through the material way too high on the amperage side. Um, and then if we flip this over, uh, you can see that again, my welds became significantly more consistent and you can see the best weld that I think I can make, which is this one right here. Um, it is clearly a different color from the, the rest of the coupon here. Um, but that was my end product before moving on to the actual project which is uh, tacking and uh, creating a rectangular, um, added up a, a rectangular box um, and then welding the seams and everything else. And so um, through the process, again, you can see the thickness of it. That was the best weld that I had. And it was actually 50-50 between two other really good welds um, that brought me to this end result. And uh, you know, I mean, I'm about halfway proud of that one. So, um, I will, I, I, I can tell you that, uh, uh the, the largest con contribution to my success was actually what I have around my neck right now, which is a set of Bluetooth earbuds, right? So these are noise canceling. They will knock out about 29 decibels, stick them on my ear. I don't hear... Uh, the guy next to me in the next uh, booth over um, cussing about how he's having so much trouble. And I also don't hear uh, in the booth next to me, my instructor praising, you know, the guy that has clearly welded or the gal that has clearly welded before. So it allowed me to block all that noise out, uh, kind of get in my own mind and, um, or get inside my own head and actually focus on the technique um, and like how to actually make it work. So uh, I would highly recommend if you are in a welding program, go ahead and get you some earbuds that are Bluetooth. That way you can listen to a podcast or music or whatever floats your boat. Um, and then my final point would be that 
uh, again, I kind of touched on this. Well, actually, I probably hit, I, I hit it really hard in the last video. But if you don't have direction, you don't know what you're doing, you're 19, 20, 18, 17, fresh out of high school going in, and you know that school really wasn't for you, um, get into a trade, uh, whether that's electrician or welding or uh, plumbing or um, uh, auto body or mechanical, whatever, try it out. Um, guys, if, 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 you, if you're not, I'm just gonna use this, I'm gonna throw it out as an example. If you're not gonna be a lawyer and you know you're not gonna be a lawyer, um, go ahead and try a trade. Um, because for me, I wish I had done this a lot earlier on in life. Um, I'm 31 years old now, and I'm just trying to figure out like what my next step is, what my next career is, um, so that I can provide for my family in the way that I need to. Um, also, I want to let you know that, yes, this is, we are in the middle of a pandemic or whatever. Um, it is the best time to actually go back to school because there's a lot of grants and there's a lot of funding for um, taking courses and actually getting into courses. So I, I highly, highly and very strongly recommend um, trying to take a course or a class uh, within the trades um, because there, there are tons of jobs out there that need welders, that need electricians, that need um, mechanics that need auto body um, uh, professionals, okay? Uh, and not only that, but there's also a ton of financial breaks, um, if not 100% inclusion, that you can just say, hey, look, this is my situation, this is what I'm doing, this is what I got going on. And they'll say, yeah, if, if you pass the class, you got it for free. Um, that's not my case, but it, it could be your case. So. Again, perfect time to get into it, uh, perfect time to go ahead and just you know pull the trigger and go ahead and get into a trade and learn something that is uh, that really is the backbone of this country, which is people that make things. Um, so that's all I got for you today. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Uh, like it if you want, comment, I will respond. Um, and, you know, I mean, if, if you find this stuff interesting or you want to, uh, you know, um, uh, join me in my progress, I'd love to have you along. Go ahead and subscribe. Um, I, but uh, like I said, I'm just a regular guy. I'm a dad. I'm uh, out here in my garage right now while my son is probably tearing up the living room. Uh, but we're going to go on a tractor ride and go from there. So uh, like I said, I'm going to close this one out. Highly recommend going to uh, your community college or your Votech or um, FFA or whatever, and just you know getting into something that you work with your hands and you can create some really cool stuff. That's all I got for you. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.